Let's turn, if we can, to the Gospel of John, chapter 8. The Gospel of John, chapter 8. And uh, recently, I've been going through the book of 1 John on Sunday mornings. And uh, very much these have been thoughts that just I wrote down in my journal as doing my devotion, studying uh, through the New Testament, reading through the New Testament. And we came here to a point last week where the message was just very doctrinal. Again, really emphasizing the truth that, that Jesus is God. And if a person has real faith, claims to have faith, they only have real faith if the Holy Spirit of truth dwells in them. If the Holy Spirit of truth abides in them and lives in them. And you can't have the Holy Spirit of truth abiding in you if you deny that Jesus is God. If you deny His deity, you deny that Jesus is Christ. You know, there was a time where uh, Jesus came to uh, the apostles and uh, they were having this conversation about, you know, wh whom do men say that I am? And some said, well, thou art Elias. Some, you know, they had different opinions about who Jesus was. And then Jesus said, well, well but whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And you must believe that Jesus is Christ. Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God. Without that belief, you do not have salvation. You, you may be sincere in worshiping God and thinking you know, but, but if you are not of the truth, you, 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 you don't have salvation. You don't have God. You must have Christ to also have God the Father in your life and so on. And uh, last week, we, as we studied through, again, we read several verses in the Gospel of John and also 1 John chapter 4, 1 John 5, 2 John, because that theme was written about repeatedly by John in his Gospel and then also in his other, uh, the, the other epistles, or other letters of John. And we emphasized last week that someone with a real faith has the Holy Spirit of truth dwelling in them. We also said the Holy Spirit of truth only dwells in those who believe that Jesus is Christ or that Jesus is God. And we saw a verse very clearly last week in John 20, verse 31, that uh, makes it very clear that anyone who does not believe, uh, that does not have God's Spirit dwelling in them, they instead are really just, they're, they're false prophets or, or deceivers, they're false teachers. So we must have Christ. We must believe that Jesus is Christ, Jesus is God. And the devil offer, offers people many counterfeits. You know, that's why there's so many counterfeits of the real thing. And, and, and I told you last week, isn't it interesting? Counterfeits, they have to look similar to the real thing or, or people wouldn't, wouldn't fall for that, right? And so the devil has offered many counterfeits and, and things that sound good and things that maybe at times be close to the truth or include some truth, but not all of the truth. And if you, do, if you deny anything, any part of the truth, or deny the truth of Christ and the, His deity and that He is God, then you are not of the truth. The Bible makes that very clear. And so it's so important that we be of the truth. And so I'm sort of continuing that today, and probably for sake of time, we'll even continue next week and make this sort of a, a three-part message in just trying to emphasize this doctrinal truth. And I think we'll bring it back next week even to some, some practical things as well. But uh, John chapter 8, we're going to read there a passage of Scripture. John chapter 8. And if you'd stand with me, please, for the reading of God's Word. John chapter 8. And for the sake of really understanding this whole story, we're going to read a good passage of Scripture here this morning. John chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. We're actually going to read all the way down through verse 47, okay? So let's read it responsively. I'll read all the odd-numbered verses, and you can read all the even-numbered verses, okay? John chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. Jesus went out unto the Mount of Olives. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, sorry, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Empty him. They 
might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And spake Jesus to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. It's very interesting, isn't it? Because Jesus was one with power to forgive sin and so on. And, and, and these people didn't like it. This record, and who you claim to be and all that you say, it, it's not true. It's not true. Verse 15. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. And will he kill himself? Because he saith, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, even the same that said that I'm sorry, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak the world those things which I have heard. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When he had lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do them. And my father taught me. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall ma uh, be made free? Jesus and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, 
because my word hath no place in you. I see that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which he has seen with your father. You see how he said, you know, my word, it, it, it's not finding any place in your heart. You're so stuck with your, all your religious beliefs and your traditions, and you don't even see who I am. You don't even get who I am. I'm your Messiah. I'm the one that, you, the God you believe in and the God that you say you're worshiping, I was sent by the Father to be your Savior. I was sent by the Father to be your Messiah. And here you are just rejecting me. You won't believe me. You won't listen to my word. They, they, they didn't have real faith. And you can't have real faith, real faith if you deny Christ. Let's go on. Verse number, where were we? Verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is her father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This is not Abraham. You know why that's significant? Because Romans makes it very clear to us that Abraham's faith was what was counted unto him for righteousness. Yeah. Don't ever think that, well, in the Old Testament, people were saved by work somehow. No, they weren't. They were saved by their faith. And Abraham had faith in God and in God's son, Jesus Christ, even though he'd never seen him yet. Right? Uh, the, even the story of Isaac on Mount Moriah is, is such an awesome thing, right? But Abraham somehow understood and had faith to believe that the Messiah was coming. God would give himself a lamb, right? He'd make himself a lamb. He'd give himself a lamb to die for the sins of the world. And he understood that. And he said, you say you're of Abraham, 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 right? They always thought Abraham and Moses and David. That's what the Jews would always say. But these ones were just caught up in religion and rituals and man's traditions and man's teachings. All the while they were reje rejecting the truth. And Jesus said to them, you don't know the Father at all because you're rejecting me. They thought they were all worshiping and pleasing the Father, but they weren't because they were rejecting the Son. They were rejecting God's Son. They were rejecting Jesus Christ. What verse were we on? 41. Ye do the deeds of your Father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, He would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. He never came out of my own self, but I came out of Jesus. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are your Father. there is no truth in him. He speaketh of his own. And because I tell you the truth, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Convinceth me of sin, and if I say the truth, why do ye not believe? And then let's read 47 together. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Let's pray together. Father, help us. Give us understanding of this important truth, this important doctrine today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. Brother Ben Cali already took us to John 10 in Sunday school and talked where Jesus shared a passage and he said, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. They weren't hearing the voice. They, they weren't understanding. The word was not abiding in them. They, they did not believe on Jesus Christ. And as a result, Jesus made it very plain to them they were not of the Father because they were not of the truth. And because they were rejecting Jesus Christ. You know, there, there are religious groups that deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, there are people that spread their false messages and their deceivers in the world. Even yesterday I encountered one. And I asked him, oh, can I have one of what you're passing out? I'd like to have that. 
And uh, if, if I got it, it's one less other person it would go to. Amen. <laughs> My brother one time years ago when he was a Bible college student, uh, he, he went to somebody uh, somewhere east end of Toronto. And, uh, oh, I'm, 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 a, I'm a witness for Jehovah, too. And uh, I've, I've ran all out of materials. Do you have some you can just share with me? And, and you, I'll just pass it out for you. You can go home and I'll pass it out for you. And so he said, sure. And so my brother ran with him to the trunk of his car and got all of his Jehovah's Witnesses material and gathered it up and, and he found a good place for it. Amen. Because <laughs> it's false. It's false. It's not of the truth. Yeah. And you need to understand that. We saw in John last week, we're not to be unkind, but we're, we're not to listen to those that deny Christ and deny his deity and deny that Christ is God. Here in this passage, we, we, we see much. And may I say there are religious people today that still deny Jesus as Christ. They deny that Jesus is God. And so the Bible makes clear to us in all the passages that we read last week and today that uh, they are not children of God and the Holy Spirit of truth does not dwell in them. And why was John in his writing, why was he so adamant that Jesus was God and that anyone who taught anything uh, other than that was a deceiver, was, was a false prophet, and, and had, we saw last week, had the evil spirit of Antichrist. They're Antichrist. They're opposed to Christ. Here he said in John 8, they're children of their father, the devil. You might say that's strong, but again, inspired by God, that's what he wrote. Because if they deny Christ and deny his deity, they're not of the truth. And John was adamant about that. It, it's because of what, turn back with me to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 17. It's because of what Peter and James and John saw and heard for themselves on the Mount of Transfiguration. I think that's one of the reasons why they were so incredibly strong on this doctrine. So in incredibly adamant of, about this truth. That if you deny Christ, you're not of the truth. And, and we see what happened for them at Matthew 17. Matthew 17 verses 1 through 9. The Bible says, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment, his clothing, was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, or Elijah, talking with him. Then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. It's another name for Elijah. Verse 5, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud. Understand, the voice out of the cloud that they heard was the voice of God the Father. A, a voice which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. God the Father. <laughs> Peter, James, and John got to have, experience a special situation where on the Mount of Transfiguration, they heard the voice of God the Father speaking to them out loud and saying, this is my son. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen to his words. Listen to what he has to say. He will tell you the truth. We need to understand that Jesus was sent from God the Father. And Jesus is God the Son. And He is our only hope. He is our only Savior. He is the only way of salvation. It says in verse 6 there, Matthew 17, 6, And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face. They got down prostrate on the ground before the Messiah. The Lord, the Son of God. They fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. 
Peter and John would both preach and teach very, very boldly after the resurrection that Jesus was the Christ, that Jesus was God, and that anyone who believed otherwise was deceived. Was deceived. Go back with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. It'll be towards the very end of your New Testament. If you're still trying to find the books of the Bible, there's a, sometimes a, an index in the front of the Bible that lists the books of the Bible alphabetically. But uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter 1. Amen. Some of you that have one of our Bibles from the table, uh, what page number is it? Anybody got it? What page number is it, Raphael? 1263. Page 1263 if you have one of those Bibles from off the table, okay? 1263. Notice what it says and notice what, what Peter proclaimed as being the truth. The truth. This is the truth of God. 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning there in verse number 15. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 15. The Bible says, Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease, after I've, after I've died, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we have made unto you the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. Remember what we saw in the Mount of Transfiguration? We're, we're eyewitnesses of His majesty. We're eyewitnesses. We've seen with our eyes the Lord. We heard the Father. We heard God speak and say, This is my beloved Son. They were eyewitnesses of that. And He says, What I've preached to you and what I've taught to you, when I'm God, I'm sure hope that you'll remember it because there'll be some that are false teachers and some that are deceivers. But may I say to you, what we, what we share with you is not just some fictitious story. It's not just things that man have ma has made up. It is the truth of God. And you must believe that. And He's so strong about it. Notice what it says, verse... Uh, 16 again, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we have made unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Isn't it good? There's a reminder there as Peter preaches that the Lord is coming again. And we have that to look forward to. Jesus, who was the Son of God, came and he died on the cross for our sins, but one day he's coming back for his own and he's coming to take us as his bride. Those who've been saved, those that have been born again. Those that have believed on the truth and believed on Jesus. He says, verse 17, for he, Jesus, he, the son of God, for he received from God, the father, honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take, take heed, you pay attention to it. We've got the word of God now as well. Not just that we were, these three men were privileged to have that special opportunity on the Mount of Transfiguration. But all of us that we have the word of God that speaks to us the truth. It speaks to us of Christ. It speaks to us of the Messiah. It says, we have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your, in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy, it's referring to the word of God, came not in old time by the will of man. It wasn't just some man-made book. And you know what? Some religions, they have their man-made books. Yeah. They have books that they have substituted for the word of God. Or, or, or you've got some religions that they'll say, well, this is in addition to the Word of God. God gave it later through, through Joseph Smith. And so you need to follow this. And this is now even more important. No, 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 no. This is the Word of God. Amen. This is God's truth. And this is what we must believe. And this is what we must follow. It says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. For chapter 2 there, but there were false prophets also among the people, 
even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying, denying the Lord that bought them and bring unto themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious way. Just because they have a crowd or has a following doesn't mean it's right. Many will follow them. Many will be deceived. Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Verse 3, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Some because they themselves were deceived, and some because of their covetousness and greed and their lust for money and power will be false prophets and deceivers denying that Jesus Christ is God. Sadly, I met a man yesterday who's, who's a little bit turned off to some things, even to, of Christianity, because his experience of Christianity was, was with some charismatic churches and um, an abuse of power and a manipulation of things and you know, saying things and then just taking things for themselves and running off. And sadly, he experienced some situations that just are ashamed to the name of Christ. That broke my heart. And, uh, but you know what the Bible teaches? Some just because they're deceived and some because of their own covetousness and greed will willingly be false teachers and deceivers. They, they speak things... That God even says, they, they know it's not the truth. But for their own covetousness and greed's sake, they'll just keep spreading their, their doctrine. We're not to fall for that. What should everything we believe be built upon? The Word of God. The Word of God. We must, listen, the truth is that Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Messiah. Peter and John, they both made that very, very clear. And what should we build our life upon? What should we make sure? What should be our guide when we want to know something of the truth? We've got to make sure it's very clear in the scriptures. It's the word of God, too. Don't, don't be deceived by people uh, on, on uh, you know, that, that are on Shaw uh, Cable, if that's still such a thing, or on some of the religious programs on the television. You, you measure everything. You judge everything by the Word of God. Yeah. So on the YouTube nowadays, right? That's the most common way. That's one of your best places to find false teachers and deceivers. Now, is there good teachers? Yes, there is. Many. But are there many false teachers and deceivers? Yes, there is. And we must, anytime someone denies Christ or denies His deity, that they're not of the truth. And anytime anybody would preach or say anything that contradicts the Word of God, they're not of the truth. It's not the truth that they're speaking to you. And so we judge everything by this book. We judge everything against the word of God. Let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help us to know what the Bible says, know what the word of God says, and to know what we believe. Not be deceived. In Jesus' name I pray.